Halo. When I say this name, what's the first thing that pops into your head? A badass protagonist? Late nights with the boys? Lost the oh shit, what the fuck? An AI that gives you bonners? No matter what that thought may be, it is undeniable that Halo has left a huge impact on those who have played some incarnation of the franchise. The influence and sheer popularity of Halo can still be felt across the video game industry to this day. The series has been going for 20 years now, starting out as an ambitious launch title for the original Xbox in 2001. Bill, I'm very flattered, I'm a big fan of yours as well. Uh, for instance, The Rock knows you're the- Involved with Epstein. <laughs> becoming a huge success spawning sequels, spin-offs, and tons of merchandise, even an anime, and that's how you know you've won at life. <laughs> the franchise was praised for its slick gameplay, emotional and engaging narratives, and addicting multiplayer that never seemed to get old, which cemented Bungie's place in the industry as one of the most successful and innovative video game developers of all time. However, of course, with the creation of Reach, Bungie soon left to follow another destiny, if you will. The franchise was then placed in the hands of 343 Industries, a team of ex-Bungie employees to carry on its legacy as one of the top dogs on the market. Ah, those were the days, that short time before the release of 4 and 5, where we all held so much hope for the franchise's future. And then of course the games came out. By now, it has become clear that we live in the timeline where 343 did not fully commit to bringing the fanbase quality games. For me and many others, it feels as though the franchise took 10 steps back, rather than a huge leap forward to propel itself even further than before. This in recent years has turned Halo into somewhat of a subpar franchise. Back in the Bungie era of Halo, the hype surrounding a new Halo game was enormous. Everyone would be talking about it, from A-list celebrities to less than mediocre talk show hosts. Back then, Halo was a top player in the market that everyone wanted to get their hands on. Ever since then though, more and more people have stopped caring, perhaps being burned out by the franchise, or just not enjoying the new direction the games were going in, which unfortunately has turned Halo into a filler franchise. Nowadays when people buy a Halo game, rather than it being the main game on everyone's minds, it feels as though people will buy a Halo game just to kill some time before quickly casting it aside after about a month of playing, or even less, and then just moving on to another game. And that sucks, because I know Halo still has potential to rise in stardom once again, which leads on to the point of this video, Halo Infinite. The sudden drop of the first trailer back in 2018 left everyone with a sense of happiness, and also with a tiny, 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 tiny smidgen of dread. Will Halo Infinite follow the dark path 4 and 5 took, or will it take the franchise back to its roots? While of course this has still yet to be seen fully, the more recent trailers and screenshots of the game have sparked hope within the fanbase. A classic, less clunky looking chief, a story set on a Halo ring, the stars seem to be aligning, but of course we should know at this point that looks can be deceiving, as we saw for the promotional media for Halo 4 and 5 being purposely misleading, and at times false, so we cannot be 100% sure our dreams of a classic Halo game are fulfilled just yet. Halo Infinite really needs to step it up in quality, not just to win back the fans, but to also redeem 343 as a whole, as this could very well be the last game in the franchise if 343 manages to cock it up again. No pressure, of course. Although it may seem 343 is on the back foot, I believe they can truly turn everything around in this installment, and today I will be talking about how they can do this with Halo Infinite. I mean, of course the game is almost definitely finished at this point, so nothing I say can alter the product. And also, this is just a crappy YouTube video, but nevertheless, you know, here we go. Now, a decent or even good story isn't always a top priority for a lot of people. As you know, typically, people would rather have enjoyable gameplay above all else, which is completely understandable, because if a game isn't fun, then what's the point in playing? Old 76, our future begins. We saw this recently with the newly rebooted Doom franchise. Although the plot is pretty vague and strange at times, this was done on purpose, to really put the focus on the satisfying movement and combat mechanics. Games are no strangers to putting the story to one side whilst mainly focusing on making the gameplay as good as possible, but this approach just doesn't work for Halo. What I remember fondly about Bungie's style of storytelling was how simple it was. Let's take Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 2 and Halo 3 for example. In Halo Combat Evolved, Bungie tells the player the plot in the first few minutes of the game. The Pillar of Autumn is on a treasure hunt for a relic that the main baddies of the story, the Covenant, 
are trying to find first. And so you go on a journey of exploring the Halo Ring, trying to uncover its purpose and eventually destroying it before the enemy can use it to wipe out the galaxy. Halo 2's story picks up almost immediately after this event, but follows two paths rather than just the one. As well as following Chief's escapade to fight the Covenant and stop them from activating another Halo Ring, you also follow the Arbiter as he tries to redeem himself for his failure in protecting the first ring, as he also uncovers the truth of the ring's true purpose. Then we get to Halo 3, the amalgamation of the previous plot from Halo 2, as now Chief must stop the Prophet of Truth from activating the Halo Rings, whilst also putting an end to the ever-growing Flood threat. Each of these individual stories is easy for the player to digest and follow, simple yet effective. This can also be said for ODST and Reach. Now, when we compare this to Halo 4 and 5, 5 especially, we really start to see how different 343 decided to tell the stories of their games. Beginning with number 4, 343 kept the plot fairly simple, like we saw with Bungie's games. However, there was an added layer of cinematic drama thrown into the mix with Chief and Cortana. Although the game follows the same conventional Halo narrative of Chief having to save humanity once again, Cortana gets a more central role in the story, as her fate is uncertain after her best before date expires. As well as this, the Covenant at this point had become second fiddle to the newly introduced Prometheans, a highly advanced metallic race of beings that as well as looking like robots, had the personalities of them too. Quest, where else to lie? The changes made by 343 with 4 were not too present when it comes to the story. It picks up from where we last saw Chief and Cortana, and lets the player easily gather what happened since the Chief went MIA. Okay, so Halo 4 was pretty straightforward, so 5 will be the same, right? No. In order to understand the pinnacle of narrative writing that is Halo 5 Guardians. The player needed to read comics, listen to podcasts, and probably find some buried treasure lying around somewhere. The story had a lot of potential to be engaging, and I'm not going to lie, the premise that we were sold was pretty interesting. Sold, but never really got. Master Chief becomes a wanted man taking on his own mission and going rogue from the UNSC, all the while being hunted down by other Spartans. But the problems soon arise when you realise the sheer number of plot threads the game introduces and quickly brushes over. Oh, we're saving Dr. Halsey. Oh, now we're looking for the Chief. Oh, now we have to find the Arbiter. Oh wow, Cortana's back, but she's bad. And now we have to fight her. And now we want to help Chief and not arrest him. It felt like the game just couldn't focus on one thing for two seconds. This is an issue that I really hope they have addressed for Infinite. Instead of cramming in every mediocre idea that came to their heads, they need to decide on a couple of plot points at most that not only offer up an interesting story, but also ones that actually make sense. I.e. not turning Chief into a war criminal. I would love the story to mainly focus around Chief and the pilot, exploring the new Halo ring like we saw in Combat Evolved with Chief and Cortana, bringing the series full circle. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. I think it will be easier to tell such a streamlined story, as it seems with this instalment we won't be bombarded by tons of new characters all at once, which is a great segue into my next point. Halo Infinite so far has not really dived too deep into showcasing the cast of characters that will be present in the game, besides of course from Chief, the pilot, Cortana, and the new villain, Ishuram? Ishuram? Eskarum? Excrement? No doubt there will be other characters, but for the time being we are left to speculate. But in order for the narrative of Infinite to truly work, it needs some good characters with clear character traits and personalities. In Bungie's era of games, it was clear which characters you were supposed to like and sympathise with, and which ones you were supposed to despise. Each character felt purposefully crafted the way they were, from the way they spoke, to how they reacted to specific situations. The writing for the majority of the characters was excellent, and each performance from their respected actors felt genuine and emotional. The chem the chemistry between these characters was also extremely strong, making each interaction feel genuine. And it's because of this that players are able to remember so much dialogue spoken by these characters, as they become ingrained in our minds thanks to their unique presence and memorability. As well as this, almost every character in Bungie's era had a purpose within the stories that were told in those games, whether that be authoritative, of singular daring and devotion. For a soldier of the United Earth Space Corps. Antagonistic. Left behind. You are forerunner. But this ring is mine. Explanatory. Your prophets have promised you freedom from a doomed existence. But you will find no salvation on this ring. Or just to get the player hyped as fuck. And we most definitely regret the core just blew up our raggedy ass fleet! Hoorah! Now with 343, the newer characters they have introduced so far have pretty much been complete misses with the fanbase. A lot of them felt like they had no personality whatsoever, making them boring to watch and ultimately drag the stories of the games down. Whereas the characters Bungie introduced were full of life and felt different from one another, the ones introduced in Halo 5 especially 
especially, had no real discerning character traits, which left their appearances in the game impactless. Of course, something like this would happen in a game that constantly introduces characters into its narrative. Some of the characters get little to no screen time, so the player doesn't get a feel of who or what they are. Yeah, it seems like Osiris is a good example of what not to do with characters. Let's start with the main man himself, Locke, the second protagonist of Guardians. Well, I say second, but he should really be first, considering he takes up almost all of the campaign. Locke is presented to the character as an excellent and formidable soldier, and a strong leader, and although he may be these things, he's pretty boring. Nothing he says really leaves any impact on the player, and lacks emotion behind it. At the end of it all, he just seems like a bargain bin chief. His dialogue isn't as good, he's not as memorable, and his armour just isn't as sexy. Nothing about Locke sticks out, which goes for Vale and Tanaka as well, but not Buck of course. The game gives them no time to really develop, as most of the focus is on Locke, or Chief, or Cortana, it's just a mess. It also didn't help that the rest of Blue Team were introduced in this game too, making the overall roster even more bloated than it already was. It seems 343 has learned their lesson from this. The dynamic between these two seems pretty good so far. The pilot in this sense acts as a guidance for Chief, like how we saw with Cortana from Combat Evolved all the way up to Halo 4. Hopefully 343 for the most part has streamlined the cast, so we can get more context and depth in new characters like the pilot, the new villain, and any more characters they introduce. Without the cluster of characters from the last game, it really gives 343 the freedom to expand upon the characters who are actually going to be in the game. Still, don't quite understand why they didn't just use Atriox from Halo Wars 2, considering he was the leader of the Banished in that game, so it would have been easier for 343 to place him in the game, as he already had some sort of backstory and depth. This makes me a little concerned as to whether 343 will be able to make this new guy an understandable, capable, maybe even likeable villain. Only time will tell. The game needs a killer soundtrack, okay, end of discussion. The music of Halo is just as important of a component as is a great story and multiplayer. Halo music has become so iconic over the years that even people who have never played the games know that epic choir-like main theme. That alone should tell you just how integral and meaningful the Halo soundtracks are for many people. Nothing gets your blood pumping and trigger finger itching like most of these works of art. In fact, there is a Halo song that conveys every emotion and tone available, whether that be curiosity, Fear, sadness, or hope. Each soundtrack feels carefully handcrafted to reflect the themes and feelings of what is happening on screen, heightening the impact of everything the player is witnessing unfold before them. Unfortunately, this legacy was ruined by 4 and 5. Although some of the music in these games is good, even the best ones don't match the weakest of Bungie's music in my opinion. They lack that personality, that flair that Bungie's Halo soundtracks had. Whereas when Halo music once added to the intensity of the game, with 4 and 5, it just feels like noise playing in the background that could be swapped out for anything else. I guarantee most Halo players can hum or sing at least some of the songs from Bungie's era, and I guarantee even less of you can remember any of the songs from 4 and 5. I mean, the only one I can ever really remember is that terrible title theme from Halo 4, holy hell. It sounded nothing like a Halo song, which pretty much sums up the soundtracks for 4 and 5. They lack personality. I'm hoping they at least took the time to make sure Infinite soundtrack is up to the test, which so far seems likely given the snippets we have heard in the trailers. My guess is they will go back to the old music style, and although that sounds great, that is isn't good enough. It's one thing taking inspiration from the older game soundtracks, but if they really want Infinite to be a great game, they need to give it its own personality. Even though all the soundtracks from Combat Evolved to Reach sounded familiar, they all had their own qualities that set them apart from one another. A lack of identity is something plastered across 343's Halo games, whereas Bungie's installments were viewed as groundbreaking works of art, 4 and 5 are far from groundbreaking. It feels like people just see them as generic sci-fi games now. If Infinite is really going to be the be-all and end-all of Halo, it really needs a great soundtrack to leave its mark on the industry, or else it risks being forgotten forever. When you think of multiplayer, Halo sticks out in the minds of many as a source of great memories when Halo was in its prime. Late night custom games with the boys, grinding for hours on end to get that piece of armour you waited so long to have, good times. 
simpler times. Like a campaign, multiplayer is integral for a Halo game to last past its release date. It keeps the community engaged and adds tons of extra content for people to enjoy. Throughout its 20 year lifespan, Halo has offered up some truly unique maps and game modes that almost always make an appearance within every new release. In fact, some game modes originating from Halo have been borrowed by other franchises, which should really tell you how influential the series has been. Game modes like Infection and Griffball have become ingrained in Halo's DNA and have become cherished by the fanbase. Although Infection was featured in Halo 4, it was heavily tweaked, receiving heavy criticism from the fans for its lack of simplicity. Okay, so a bit of a bad start for 343's Infection. Maybe Halo 5 will turn it around? Well, although that was eventually the case, Halo 5 Guardians did not launch with Infection. What the fuck? It took six months, pretty much halfway through the game's lifespan, to include this iconic game mode. Not only this, but Halo 5's multiplayer was heavily criticised for its lack of maps, reliance on community creations, and its infamous inclusion of the rec system, turning the whole thing into a fucking slot machine to get a new plasma pistol. No way. No. I think it's safe to say that Infinite will not include the rec system, and will most likely follow the same system that was added to the Master Chief collection. Although Guardians did introduce some good additions to multiplayer, its reputation was forever smeared thanks to it turning its back on what made Halo multiplayer so unique in the first place. If Infinite wants to be played for months, or even years to come, it needs to include what made Halo multiplayer so great. Not a battle royale, thank you very much Jack. Luckily, Halo Infinite's E3 appearance just gave us a few new teases of what to expect with multiplayer, definitely getting some Halo Reach vibes with the armour designs. We also got a look at one of these new coating systems for the customization. This sneak peek has also warmed me up to the new Spartan abilities that definitely look like they will be extremely useful. They look a lot more practical than some of the other abilities we saw in Halo 4, although I am a little worried as some of them look pretty overpowered. Being able to pick up weapons from a far distance is going to make rushing for power weapons interesting, and it also looks like people won't be able to hide in Banshees so easily anymore. We also hear the announcer say, Ordnance drop inbound, which could mean a number of things. Perhaps killstreaks have been added to the game, maybe it's a drop that spawns randomly as the game you are playing progresses, or maybe this could mean the dreaded return of the wreck system. One part of the reveal I can't quite grasp is the AI that appears in front of one of the Spartans. Perhaps it does a damage boost. Too early to tell yet, but maybe we'll get some others that grant more speed or stronger shields. It would be greatly appreciated by everyone if the game launched with fan favourites like Infection, Invasion, Griffball, Big Team Battle, you know, the more the better. Not only does the game need good modes, it needs good maps too. As I mentioned earlier, Halo is some of the most iconic battlefields in gaming. Places like Sandtrap and Valhalla and many others are all easily recognisable amongst people familiar with the franchise and have been remade countless times. No doubt some of these will return in Infinite in some shape or form, but I think it's about time 343 made some iconic maps of their own, seeing as how we are going back to the setting of a Halo ring for this installment. It's a perfect opportunity for them to theme some of their maps around that classic Forerunner structure that we saw in Combat Evolved, which would be a great callback to the older games. It also needs some of its own flair present in its maps, so I think it would be great to see some banished themed maps as well. Perhaps on a capital ship, or maybe even a banished base, you know the possibilities at this point are endless. However, the biggest aspect of multiplayer that I feel could make or break infinite is the custom games. Custom games in Halo are often the most entertaining part of the games, which is amazing to think about as they are created by members of the community, which highlights the passion and dedication so many people have for the franchise. At some point or another, anyone who has played Halo has played a custom game, whether that be when you and your friends downloaded a bunch of maps and game modes and just binged them for several hours straight, or maybe you were invited by a random in a lobby and had a blast taking a break from the competitive side of Halo, just to have some good old fashioned fun. We all have our favourites, mine of course being Fat Kid, as I am a man of culture. Although plenty of games nowadays contain party games that steer away from their traditional game modes, Halo's custom games gives you the tools to really push the boat out and experiment, leading to some truly amazing creations. This is why it is integral that Infinite has a good custom game system at launch, as not only would it freshen up the variety players had at their disposal, but it would also encourage creative members of the fanbase to craft bigger and better creations. A healthy and dedicated fanbase like Halo should be cherished by any developer, although we are lucky to be blessed with the Halo franchise, 343 is lucky to have a community as strong as this one. Halo Infinite is a big deal for a lot of us who grew up with the franchise all those years ago. It would be amazing to see Halo back in the limelight, breaking records and being plastered across Twitch and YouTube. It'd be like watching a classic Halo machinima back in the day. <laughs> this can't be achieved unless 343 takes the criticisms from their past two games and works out what to keep and what to give the boot. 
Bye bye. Needlessly complicating everything will hurt the overall quality of the game in some way, shape, or form. Keeping the narrative streamlined allows them to flush it out properly without needless side plots clogging it up. Just keep it concise and to the point. And give us a warthog run as the final mission.